Hi, it's Dave from Drive and Venture. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so already, please think about subscribing, getting the notification bell on. Today, I am reviewing this very clean, thanks to Thinly, 600 LT. Well, welcome inside the cabin of this ultra fab McLaren 600 LT, the long tail from McLaren that was brought out to be that bit rawer, strip out some weight and give you that bit more. But this car has got some surge, let me tell you. It's got some real surge. The V8 engine, that twin turbocharger, the torque is unreal just picks you up and carries you forward. You get that whistle in the back. The engine's right there, right behind you. This is a mid-engine car. I've driven this car a little bit already now today. And what it really gives you, as well as lots of performance, is an awful lot of rawness. So this car feels very alive in your hands. The steering is very, very sharp. It's scalpel sharp. The downshift just gives you that little jolt through the, <laughs> through, your, through the seat. It's got a lot of grip. But it's the way it just punches the torque in. That just, <laughs> it really does, it's like, a, it's just a real revelation. So we're looking at 620 newton meters of torque. This car will do 205 miles an hour, not to 130 miles an hour, just 8.2 seconds. So it's got blistering performance, not to 60, it's sub three seconds, it's 2.9. So it's got a very similar, I guess, level of performance to the turbo cab, as I've recently driven. But the cars are very different. This car is very raw, it's louder, I think the performance stakes very, very similar, but the way this delivers the power, it, it, I don't know, the torque, it, it, just, it, just, it just surges. It's effortless, effortless torque, it really is. The other big difference, I think, is that the chassis, it's just so, it's just so solid, it's just, it's carbon solid, it's carbon firm, it's super rigid. And so you're feeling all of the undulations, you're feeling all of the bumps. And I actually like that about a car. I actually like to feel the rawness of a car. So it kind of, it's kind of got like a GT3 type feel, but it's got like that Turbo S punch and performance. So it's a sensational car. I mean, just here now. breathtaking it really is these center seats nice and comfortable so there's not much rocking and rolling in these <laughs> the carbon ceramic brakes yes they they need to warm but you can you can bring things to a conclusion just as quickly as you can take this car forward the propulsion on the engine sensational but the way the brakes come to your aid and the band setting the car up now this is the first McLaren I've ever driven on the channel and maybe I should be driving some more. Very, very exciting, very exciting car. It feels very futuristic as a McLaren for me. The interior is so distinctive, it's so different. And I've never driven a car that's turned as many heads. This car, Onyx Black, I love the orange detailing around the edges. This car's got a lot of aero, it means business. It's designed to, to thrill the driver. The downforce, clearly here, 100 kilograms of downforce on this car. So, you know, it's gonna push you into the tarmac and it's gonna help you. The 
way the brakes come in, it's just... You get to a speed so fast, you, you know, the turbo spool up, you get to speed so fast, it's deceptively quick, this car. It really is deceptively fast. I think sorry brakes are definitely necessary to scrub that speed off because the car it just just picks you up and takes you forward. The surge and the rawness, that's the thing that stands out. The car is extremely raw, extremely exciting. The sound too. It's bellowing, it's there. Obviously it's not as it's not as loud as a GT3, but you know it's a great sound. I can see how people that drive these cars are thrilled by them because that 3.8 twin turbo unit it does growl a bit, you know. I mean I've got a four-litre twin turbo in the E63, but this thing it does growl does growl and the exhaust pops too. It's a very focused machine, there's no doubt about it. Compared to the more practical 911, this is just focused on delivering punch, performance, exhilaration. And I think this car is one that's in a collection of cars you have because the performance is just, just sensational. Okay, so the McLaren 600LT MSO specification. I have to have some notes. Again, thanks again, Finlay, for putting these together for us. Um, I'm not as familiar with McLaren products. I'm obviously with Porsche, so these notes are gonna help me as we go through this car. So the carbon roof is an MSO special operations feature on this car. And I do like this McLaren sticker. Just in case you don't know what's coming up behind you, you'll notice some McLaren when you see that. This car has had a big diet when it comes to weight and the carbon detailing on the roof, you've got the, in the front, uh, front wheel arches here, lots of carbon on the interior of the car too. Help the car to be that bit lighter. Sub 1300 kilograms, this car's coming in at 1247 kilograms, that's light. 600 horsepower, well 592, let's not split hairs. It's got these ultra light wheels here as well which I think look fabulous in this like dark dark grey colour and the thing about the car is it just looks so modern looks so edgy and I think that's what attracts people to them I love this uh, detailing they have on the car and all the sort of front aero you've got your 600 LT on the side here but it's just a different looking product and um, when we think about McLaren obviously we think about the 1992 sensational McLaren F1 who can forget that car with that centre driving position? Back of this car, got a nice fixed spoiler here, got your rear brake lights here. This mesh on the back, this mighty V8 engine here in this, this mid-engined uh, vehicle, really does pump out some pump out some power. And when you're driving along, you look at the rear, you, you look at the rear view mirror, you see the heat just shimmering <laughs> off this car. And you can see here where it's come off the top of the spoiler as the uh, exhaust ga gases have escaped. They've been blown with the air over the rear spoiler. There's lots of air on this car and as you pick up speed, you do feel very, 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 very secure as you are catapulted forward. I love these wing mirrors, pop out the side. But the thing that really, again, makes McLaren exciting, I think, is the door mechanism. You know, the, the doors that pop up like this and that's just so easy to, to do check out these uh, air vents as well. The air comes down the side of the car, it's channeled in here, and then it gets sucked in, does its cooling game with the engine. Extremely agile car, extremely agile. Internally, it's got the center seats. These are the only seats to have, I guess. They're the kind of Visa V918 bucket equivalent for a McLaren, and this is the Touring Spec uh, seats, and they've got carbon frames. And the pattern's a little bit thinner in this one because these seats are the actual the touring versions. So let's have a look at the 
front end, as I said in the pieces to camera, it's probably not the most practical car in the world because you have no other capacity other than what's here. So, you know, I've got my camera equipment in there today, but it's so thrilling to drive. You'd almost pay for someone to come behind you with a more practical vehicle to, with all your luggage because it's so exciting to drive, so thrilling. So it, it does enough, it does enough, pack wisely. Front end of the car, this aero again, it comes in here, both sides, these vents, these scoops, just channel the air in does the job on this car and as it picks up speed it does feel extremely well planted on the road so uh, let's check out the interior okay so let's check out the internal features of this McLaren 600LT. Now this is the third long tail vehicle to be produced. Some people say it's the fourth if you include the original GTR race car. So LT stands for long tail. I think it's eight millimeters longer. When you get in this car, you notice how compact the cabin is. It's quite a wide car. But when you get in you know, here, it's very, very wide on both sides. So you've got quite a narrow area to get your legs in and to operate the pedals. These seats, really supportive, slightly thinner uh, padding on the touring version, the center seats, but the carbon detailing on here, it's purposeful. This car is designed to take you onwards and uh, hold you <laughs> hold you tight for dear life. Because I mean, this car now, what, 130 miles an hour in a mere 8.2 seconds. I mean, that is just unbelievable performance. Obviously we're safe, safe and legal to do so. We'll be doing that in England last year on a racetrack. And to 62 mile an hour, 2.9 seconds. So this car is a Rapido with a capital R. Love the contrasting Alcantara detail. You've got it on the steering wheel. You've got it through the cabin here on the face here, through the seats, you know, the black and um, the red contrast is absolutely fab. So in inside the cabin of the 600 LT, very clean inside too, Finlay, great job, great job, sir. Center console in carbon fiber, carbon fiber in the switch gear here. Here you've got your options for the engine management system. So you've got just standard mode, sport and track mode. Centre console, it's very, very purposeful, this car. It's just designed, I think, when you get in it, just to thrill the driver with performance. So it's very purposeful. You've got your rev meter straight ahead, fuel gauge, you know, the speed on, the speed comes up next to the uh, rev meter. Over here, you've got your light switch. I do like these vents, I think they're cool, kind of a little bit, smaller in diameter they're really cool again carbon on here but it's all alcantara that goes on everywhere in this car it just makes it feel really sporty and racy mclaren badge there in metal that's quite classy but underneath the seats you've no carpet at all so they've taken weight out of this car to make it more more of a thoroughbred race car i think and i think this is the difference between a turbo s and this car again they're not really they're not really co the competitors i don't think we're the different cups of tea but uh, but for a very raw fast exciting driver's car which is very comfortable on track this car has to be a consideration you've got your button here and your stalk for the axle lift this takes the car high i think both i think the whole car goes up actually with this but just lifts it up uh cruise control you've got your indicators windscreen wiper operation here I like the carbon fiber on here and your badge nice small steering wheel i'm with my clod have a boots on <laughs> you need to be careful when you're hitting the brake coming off the accelerator but it's just a very exhilarating car just just a fab cabin to be and it feels really sporty when you get in this car before you even turn the engine on you know what it's going to give you 100 i like this badge down here too mclaren 600 lt just a really exciting car and these seats are a lot more comfortable than perhaps they look very supportive a full package car delivers exhilaration for the driver and at the price point these are at an absolute bargain of a car it really is different against the Porsches I'm used to driving, the 911s, because the tyres are, th are narrower. These are 225 at the front, I think uh, the 285 at the back. And that makes the car a little bit more playful for me. The bend, it just darts around on the road. 
Now the base 600 LT is obviously a very exciting car. This car has the Club Sport Pro pack and so it just sheds weight like a slim fast plan diet. It's just lighter, this is coming in at just under 1300 kilograms. And the thing about the turbo engine, you don't need to go down like you would in the RS to get the lower gear, to get the power band. With this, you've got the power band in higher gears because the turbos come to your aid and you are gone. It's raw, it gives you confidence, takes the bends, the sweepers so well. They've really brought out an amazing driver's car with this, this uh, 600 LT. There's no doubt about it. I'm scared to think what a 765 LT would be. And I think because it's got the V8 engine, it gives you that noise and that's part of the package. It's part of the show. It's part of what McLaren gives you with this car, which you don't get in three cylinder turbo units or six cylinder engines. You just got more. I mean, just go, just go third. So what can I say about this car perhaps, which is negative? Is there anything about the car maybe I'd like to be a bit different? Well, okay, the boot's not as big as a Porsche. You don't get any rear seats for more capacity. You're only gonna get two people in it. Can it really be classified as things to be a little bit critical of? it's not as practical but like it comes back to what I was saying before it's essentially a car that's designed precision instrument to absolutely blow you away with performance and thrill and you don't need practicality all the time so I want to talk about practicality yeah I mean the Porsche isn't like it's not an SUV is it it hasn't got all that going on but it's a little bit more practical this I think this car's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And the other great thing about McLaren is, and I don't understand it, I've never really understood it, and maybe, as I said before, the content supply and demand thing, maybe the supply of these cars, the demand, it's led to the prices coming down quite a bit from when they were launched and their list price. This was a car originally that was considered to be difficult to get. And as it's turned out, it's a car which became a bit easier to get and that's led to the prices coming down a little bit so you, know, you can pick up an unbelievable spec car like this and you're going to pay less than 150 grand now you want this kind of thrill in a, in a Porsche car you're going to have to go Turbo S because none of the other Carreras are going to do it so it's going to be the Turbo S and you're going to be paying north of 180 now, I haven't driven a 991.2 turbo, but I don't think the handling for the previous generation 991 is going to be as good as this. It's going to be as raw and as exciting as this is. The Turbo S more civilised, but this thing is raw. It's just a lot, a lot of fun. It's just breathtakingly easy to put the power down. You've got to seriously consider one of these if Porsche isn't your thing maybe because this car is extremely exciting that pop there on the exhaust it's just all there it's a handful and the noise again it's a big factor this car sounds a lot better than the Turbo S without a doubt the Turbo S is a little bit more subdued the bigger capacity V8, or should I say the extra cylinders, just gives you a bit more growl and a bit more fun, I think, when it comes to the eardrums as you're pressing on. Maybe you could go for a cab, get the spider, take the roof off for even more thrill. This thing on track must be unbelievable. The tyres perhaps could do with being a little bit wider, needing a little bit more rubber, a little bit more contact surface area to handle the power that this car has. 
because it's the surge from that talk that really it opens your eyelids it just makes you gawk at what it can do the gear change easily as quick as a PDK easily as fast upshifts brutal that's the word it's brutal and for me who's someone who loves his driving loves the trips loves to do stuff this is a car you couldn't you, you will absolutely be in heaven with driving on roads like this or whether it's in Scotland or you know the A roads on the way home from work this car is exciting it's the devastating torque that does it it just picks it just picks up so fast so there we have it the mclaren 600 lt long tail thanks again to thinley for getting this car all prepped for us it was very pristine when we picked it up not so pristine now after a few miles under its belt fabulous car great value for money exhilarating drive if you haven't done so already please think about subscribing getting the notification bell on and as always i'll see you next time